But here's the point. An intelligent person is somebody that can understand opposing views. Hey, many of you are left-wing liberals that hate Trump. Well, if you're so smart, how can you can't understand somebody's opposing view? How can you, you can't understand somebody who's voting for Trump? Why can't you understand it? You don't have to agree with it, but you don't have to get angry over it either. That's the sign of intelligence. This is, is the Kevin Trudeau Show. I am exposing the corruption in government and in major multinational corporations. We're telling you the things that they don't want you to know that will make your life better. There was a great article that was written about a major study with some really brilliant people. And this went on for decades. And it says that there are subtle signs that show if you are incredibly intelligent. So I am going to give you a test right now. And you can test yourself. If you have a piece of paper, you can jog this now. You can always watch the show later. But this is the test. Tell me, this is going to, this is going to determine how intelligent you are. It says, number one. Are you confident in saying, I don't know? If people around me know me, one thing is I know, I know a lot about a lot of things. But I instantly say, I don't know. Incredibly often when I don't know. Because I don't know. And I have confidence in saying that. Okay, now I'm not going to brag about my intelligence here. I want you to ask yourself, are you confident in saying, I don't know? Hey, Charlie, want to build a barn over here? Can you help me out? Do you have any ideas? Oh, sure, I can help you. Have you ever built a barn? No. Then you should say, "Uh, you know, I don't know how to build a barn. I've never built one, but I'll be happy to help you out and, you know, Add my two cents, but I don't know how to build a barn. I've never built a barn. See, that was that should be the first thing you say. I don't know how to build a barn. I've never built a barn. I mean, we can bang on, bang our heads together, maybe come up with something, but I don't know. So, how confident are you are saying I don't know? Number two, are you a good problem solver? Even if something, even if it's something you have no experience with. Do you approach the problem from the right angle? Intelligent people are very good at problem solving. And not only problem solving, but attacking the issue from the right angle. Knowing what the real issue is. And this is something that's hard for you to objectively say because you think you're a good problem solver. You think you're coming at the right angle. I've been around people many, many times. And I have a friend of mine who's a genius and we'll look at a problem, and he says, no, we should look at it this way. And I'm thinking, that's pretty damn smart. He's looking at it from a different angle than most of the other people here in the room. And that's why he's uh, got the highest IQ in the room. People who are very intelligent solve problems very quickly, very efficiently, but most importantly, they come at problems from the right angle. Next. Understanding and appreciating nuance. Intelligent people can hold two opposing ideas in their head at the same time. The study went on to say anyone who's willing to do that is very intriguing to others, especially with polarizing issues. People generally think they're very interesting to talk to. So not only does it show you're intelligent when you understand nuance and can have polarizing ideas at the same time and hold them in the same spot in your head. But it also makes you very likable and very approachable. And that means more money in your pocket. Next. What does this mean? Hold on. Ah, there we go. When being taught to do something new, do you care just as much, if not more, about why it should be done a certain way as you do about what needs to be done. This, this article goes on to say, many people get offended at this. 
when you want to know why something is being done, not just what needs to be done. This particular researcher said, I had a teacher in high school get irrationally angry because I asked why we were doing something a certain way. And they screamed, don't question my authority. Well, how else am I supposed to learn? I always want to know why. Okay, I want you to do this. I remember when I was in prison dealing with some very unintelligent people working for the Bureau of Prisons. Quite frankly, probably one of the most uneducated group of uh, people on the planet. Some of them are very well-intentioned and do a really great job. But generally speaking, probably not the brightest people. They're working for the government. Many of them are ex-military, and they're just, you know, government staff members who go to work, get their paycheck, get a nice pension. And quite frankly, maybe just don't have that type of super IQ. And I was in the business office, and uh, the, we had pens. We had pens like this. And there were a bunch of green pens with green ink, a bunch of them. And there were pens that had black ink. So I, I was supposed to fill out these forms, as the government would have you do, fill out the form, put it in the filing cabinet. And I went in the filing cabinet, just dust everywhere, which means no one ever went into the filing cabinet to look at any of these forms. But the protocol was fill out the form, put it in the filing cabinet. Okay. That's how the government operates. They just do things without any thinking of why are we doing this? So I grabbed the form, I grabbed the pen, and there's tons of pens there. So I just grabbed the pen and I started filling the form out. The supervisor comes over and says, hey, you can't use green ink, you have to use black ink. I said, why? You have to use black ink. And I go, no, I understand that's what you want me to do. And I'll be happy to do that. I'm just curious, why black ink? What's the difference between black ink or red ink or green ink? It, the paper is going to go in that filing cabinet for which it's going to be there for the next hundred years. No one's ever going to look at it. And what does it matter? Even if somebody does look at it, whether it's red ink or orange ink or green ink or black, blue ink or black ink, what's the difference? Just use black ink. That's stupid. See, that's a stupid person. Are you a stupid person? Don't be stupid. I'm trying to help you. Okay, next. An intelligent person can adapt their communication style, vocabulary, tone, content to fit the situation and people they're talking to and it seems completely natural. Think about that in your own life. When you're dealing with somebody, maybe they're, they use a big vocabulary, or maybe they don't have a big vocabulary. Do you always communicate exactly the same way, or do you adapt and improvise and modify your communication style with the person you're dealing with? This is critical if you want to get people to like you, if you want them to understand you, if they want to get into sync with you, you have to get into sync with them first. Don't try to get people to understand you. Understand them. That's critical. Getting into step Understanding their communication style is critical. An intelligent person does this innately, automatically, and instinctively. And they do it completely natural. So make a note of that and ask yourself, am I communicating in an effective way or not? Something to consider. Next, are you okay with being perceived as stupid by asking questions? If you hold back in fear, you'll never truly learn. Plus, asking, asking, question is a, asking questions is a good way to show others it's okay to question things if you don't understand. We're all better off if we're on the same page instead of hoping things work out without being informed. Intelligent people have no problem asking questions. They have no fear of appearing dumb or stupid. I remember one time I was at a restaurant with a bunch of very wealthy people. We were at this fancy schmancy restaurant. And on the menu was sweetbreads as an appetizer. And I said, I don't think it's bread that's sweet. I think it's something else, but I don't know what it is. So I said, excuse me, to the, to the waiter. I says, I've, I've never had sweet breads. Exactly what are sweet breads? And they went on to, to describe this, the organs of the, of the animal that are sweet breads. And, and I thought, well, I don't think I want that. And we, everybody at the table laughed, you know. It didn't make me appear stupid. It made me appear incredibly confident in myself. Think about that. Next. All right. Okay. 
Someone who is intelligent is able to explain something incredibly complicated in simpler and more readily understood terms. If you think you're intelligent, do you have the ability to take a very complicated concept and explain it in a sentence or two? I remember I was sitting at a dinner with a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant fellow named Jay Abraham. Some of you know him. So Jay and I were sitting there, and I love Jay. Matter of fact, I just talked to him a few weeks ago on the phone. So Jay Abraham, brilliant marketing guy, genius, spectacular, love him, wonderful guy. And I was with a couple guys from Nightingale Coning Corporation, and we're sitting down. And I asked Jay some questions, and he was explaining something in great detail. And I was fascinated with what he was saying, and he was really explaining it. And Jay is a, is a very great, very good communicator. He does have a tendency to maybe go a little longer uh, than I would, you know, in, in terms of brevity. So he was explaining something, and I think it was about 18 minutes where he was talking at the dinner table. It's just kind of hard to eat when somebody's talking, when you're talking for 18 minutes, you can't put food in your mouth. So he was talking, but he was very passionate about what he was talking about, so he was talking for 18 minutes. And I'm sitting there, and I said, and I was really intently listening to everything he said, because it was fascinating, and the only way I can learn is to listen. So after he, he, he spoke, I thought, and I said, so what you're really saying is blankety, blankety, blank, blank. And he looked at me, and he said, Kevin, you have the ungodly ability to take a complicated concept and just simplify it. It's, I've never seen anything like that. That's exactly what I was trying to say. And he, he goes, for, for that entire time. And everybody at the table laughed. I said, well, you should hire me as your editor. You know, we, ju we just giggled. That is an art and a skill, and it also is a, a sign of intelligence. Einstein called it crunching, where he would take a concept that he would try to explain it, and sometimes it would be a thousand pages, and then he would think about it and think about it, and then he would write it again and explain it, it would go down to 500 pages. Then he'd think about it and think about it, then he'd write it again, and then he kept crunching it down to simpler terms. This showed his intelligence, because he was capable of taking what initially was an incredibly long, complicated concept and crunching it down in very simple terms. Really powerful. Next, intelligent people, honestly, after reading their own work, debates, talks, podcasts, discussions, arguments, etc., notice that they often use conditions in their sentences that are not absolute. So intelligent people, if you analyze the communication, whether it's a podcast, a book, or whatever, Highly intelligent people don't talk in absolutes. They use, there's a, there's a saying that says, only a fool talks in absolutes. Intelligent people use things like, I think, it may be, many times, oftentimes, usually, m m often, it's possible, it could be, if, it could be if, perhaps, it appears, it seems, think about that. Now, unless somebody's doing a podcast for dramatic effect, and you're trying to shock somebody or push somebody's button, do you throw this absolute out there? Because that'll automatically rattle somebody, because they know there's no such thing as the absolute. But intelligent people, generally, when they're having a conversation, use words like, well, it appears, based on the information I have. So if you hear somebody start a sentence like, you know, Joe, it appears, based on the information I reviewed so far, that that's an intelligent person. That's an intelligent person speaking. Somebody with a very high IQ. That's an indicator of their high intelligence. And lastly, intelligent people ask really good questions and listen more than they talk. Well, that's not last. I got a few more. Do you ask questions or do you talk mostly? And when someone's talking, are you listening to them or are you going... It's like you're waiting for them to finish so you can jump in. Do you cut people off mid-sentence? Think about it. Intelligent people listen 
more than they talk. You have two, ear, two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionally. Next, intelligent people is someone who can understand someone's opposing view without having to agree with it or get angry over it. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh no, I guess I'm not that intelligent. I know, you get really irritated. And I love pushing your buttons to get you really mad. Some of you don't, haven't figured it out yet. This show, for example, is designed as my role in this incarnation is. It's to push your buttons. It's to stimulate you. It's to, in many cases, get you irritated. Not just get you to agree with everything I'm saying. I do things specifically and on purpose to get you annoyed and piss you off because if that happens, that means a samskara or an energetic imprint that's in your field is keying in, it's activating, it's being stimulated. I'm pushing one of your buttons. I'm triggering some energy that is trapped in your field that's not helping you. It's not empowering you. It's, it's, it's reducing your ability to be a cause of your environment. So I want to stimulate that and free you of this. Your liberation, your freedom on all levels and all dimensions is what I'm here for. Not to get you to like me. So some of you haven't figured that out yet, especially when I stimulate it. You, do, you don't even think, because you're so keyed in, things are sim stimulated and you're so triggered. I bring things to surface so powerfully that you can't even see straight. But here's the point. An intelligent person is somebody that can understand opposing views. Hey, many of you are left-wing liberals that hate Trump. Well, if you're so smart, how can you can't understand somebody's opposing view? How can you, you can't understand somebody who's voting for Trump? Why can't you understand it? You don't have to agree with it, but you don't have to get angry over it either. That's the sign of intelligence. Look, if you're, if you're a left-wing liberal, and I have friends of mine who are left-wing liberals. I was with my, my friend John, he was on this show from Beverly Hills, and he says, you know, a Trump supporter thinks that Trump is going to make the country safer. I disagree with that. I don't think he's going to make the country safer, but at least that's, they think he will. He, they think he's going to shut down the border. They think that people coming across the southern border are criminals. And my friend, being a left-wing liberal, says, I don't think that's true. Um, but they think that's the case. So I can understand their viewpoint. I mean, so he understands. He doesn't agree. He doesn't get angry over it. He doesn't hate them. He can still sit down and have dinner with them and have a stimulating conversation without just calling people names. He can, he can debate the policies of the Democrats versus the Republicans, the left versus the right. He can, he can challenge and debate those policies, how things would be different under one administration over another, without, without getting angry and without necessarily agreeing. That's a sign of intelligence. So can you understand someone's opposing view without having to agree with it or get angry over it? Next, intelligent people feel challenged rather than threatened by new things, problems, and ideas. Intelligent people don't feel threatened by doing something different or new technology or a change. They don't feel threatened. They feel challenged. They may not agree with it, but they feel challenged with a new idea, a new way of thinking, a new proposition, new technology. They're challenged, they're not threatened. There's a huge difference there. And finally, this is the finally one. Intelligent people don't continually need to tell people how intelligent they are. They know, they have a confidence level. This is also the sign of an enlightened person. If you are around somebody and they're telling you how, and I've been around people all the time, and they always say, I'm in bliss, I'm in bliss, I'm in bliss. I'm in, they always say, every time I meet them, hey, how are you? I'm in bliss, I'm in bliss. Life is beautiful, I'm in bliss, I'm in bliss. Okay, I, you think you are, I understand that. But if you're truly somebody who's past the veil, with, with the very rare exception of somebody whose public persona and mission in life is to be a public guru, 
and that's very, very rare. But even in those cases, somebody who is spiritually enlightened doesn't share this with others because there's nothing to share. They, it's an inner knowingness, and they understand that they can't try to make a pig sing. They can't explain something to somebody's mind that's beyond their mind. They're never going to understand it anyways. And why do they need to convince this person? Anytime you're trying to convince somebody of your way of thinking, specifically on a religious issue or a political issue, you have doubt. It shows your lack of confidence in yourself, your lack of self-esteem, your lack of a positive self-image, and your lack of intelligence. Think about it. It doesn't mean you won't share something, but the need to convert somebody into your way of thinking, to your political party, your religious belief, or whatever, this shows lack of intelligence. Lack of self-confidence. So think about those things. I mean, when you think about yourself, n number one, forget other people. Sure, you can say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to now look at other people and this, this will be my subtle cues to determine whether they're uh, intelligent or not. Okay, that's fine. Subtle cues. But focus on yourself and raise your level of intelligence. Hi, I'm Kevin Trudeau. This is everything they don't want you to know about to improve the quality of your life. Broadcasting every Monday and Wednesday, two days a week now, Monday and Wednesday at one o'clock Chicago time. Make sure you tune in and subscribe to the channel and share these shows with everyone you know.